And this tutorial shows how Spire's filters, searches, and export works. So for instance, if I click on any one of the modules, you'll see everything comes up in a list format. So in customers, we're in a list, and we click on inventory, it's in a list. So you can now click on any one of those columns and sort by it. So if I sort by name and I click my my cursor down into the name column, I can type in TR and I'll jump straight down to Trade Co here. And if I just arrow down to start over again, I can type SA and it will jump down to Sacramento. So any column can be searched on. So that can be the city. So if I type in TOR here, for instance, it draws me to Toronto, right? This search box up here is a all-encompassing search box that searches all the fields at the same time. So if I type in Toronto, then what it does is it shows me all of the customers with, well, the city of Toronto, but also if they're, the word Toronto was in their name or in the, in the case of this first one, if I look inside of Jackness Fitness Center here, I'll see that they have a Toronto ship to address. So it searches there as well. And it also searches the notes inside of a customer. So if I type in the word, say, watch, then it brings up two of them here, including Jackness, Jackson again. And I find that in communication or notes in Jackson, the word watch says to watch to make sure there's no invoices over 60 days. So it's, it searches fully inside the whole database. I can also throw multiple words at it. So if I type in Toronto, then I type in the word John, then it brings up two uh, customers that are in the city of Toronto in this case and have a contact name of John. So I can keep adding to that as well, or I can even subtract from it. So if I have Toronto and I see that there's a bunch of customers here with the word Inc on their name, I can go minus INC and it removes all the customers with the word Inc. So this becomes very helpful in places like sales history. So if I want to find where a product was sold, I can come in here and I can type in the word heart. And each of these invoices here that showed it has a heart rate monitor into it. So if I double click it, if I look at the details of it, you'll see the word heart on this Omega 300 heart rate monitor. So if a customer is looking where to purchase something from, uh, if you're a distributor, uh, you can say that, well, in this case, I shipped X number to that particular customer in this city, and I can find it very, very quickly. Same as in sales orders. If I want to find, uh, if I want to look at all my sales orders here, and I, my supplier has told me that my heart rate monitors are not going to be in stock on time, uh, like expected, I can type in the word heart, and I see I've got five orders. If I open up them, open them up, then I will see that I've got this heart rate monitor on this order. And if I go to my next order, I can see again, I've got this heart rate monitor on here. Um, I can then go to the bill to tab, phone each of the customers and tell, look, I don't have them. Do you want to keep it or not? And if they say no, I can just delete that one item from the order, resave it, and then ship the rest of the product to them. So let's have a look at filtering. So a filter is a way to save a search. So if I add a filter and I want to say where my balance, my customer's balance is not zero. So there's all my customers that owe money. So I can find that column here somewhere. There's a balance column right here and I can just drag that over and columns will move where you want them and they will stay there until you move them again uh, and they don't affect anybody else's uh, computer. So you can feel free to move those around as you wish, as well as being able to remove them. So I can uncheck any column that I don't want to see here. Okay, so there's my first criteria, but I can keep adding to that. So I can say where the city is, and I can type Toronto. So there's my six, five customers here that owe me money from the city of Toronto. And I keep adding to that where the, so the list gets shorter and shorter. In addition to that, I can save this as a named filter. So I go same, save preset, and I can just say customers in TO owing money, and I can set it for myself or everybody in the company. 
If I set it for myself, then this filter is only available for me. If I set it to company, this filter now becomes accessible by everybody. If I click OK, so I've added that filter, which is showing up down here now. But now I can also add that to my list. So if I go here, I go add filter to module list. Then it becomes available as one of my ones on the bottom of the list here. And so these, if I click it, so there's one here. I've got a filter that just says year-to-date sales is greater than 10,000. This is my customers where balance is more than $50,000. Customers with open orders, so they've got an order in the system. And I can move these around as well. So this is my important one I want at the top, I can do so. And then this becomes my own little report engine here. So if, for instance, one of the ones I saved earlier was customers uh, email list. I'll just take this year-to-date sales off. And in this case, email is not blank. So there's all my customers with an email address and their contact name. So I've got different columns set up here, but I can pull this down to a smaller list. So I can take off, say, the province, and I'll just take off all these fields here. I mean, so if I, I just want to create this list for an email a list that I can send out to a to a uh, somebody to mail off something for me or email off something for me, unchecked email address. So let's just put that back on. So there's the email address, and I'm going to go resave this, and I'll just save this as preset. Call it email list. And I'll even add that onto my filter. So I've got my email list now, so I can go to all customers, and I can bring just my email list up. So now if I want to, I can take this list and export this. So I click my export button, and I'll just drop it onto my desktop, call this list. And then what happens is it creates the Excel file, and it opens up in Excel. And if we look at the list, it's in the exact same layout as what I exported. So the same sort, so it's sorted by customer code and the same column layout. And then the top column gets locked, so you scroll through a big list, you don't lose your header. So just a couple more examples where this can be used. Inventory, needs ordering. So I've saved one here called needs ordering, where a filter is for my suggested quantity is not zero. So there's all my suggested uh, items, so I can go ahead and create a little order for this. Uh, items not sold in two years, so there's three filters set here. This year's sales is zero, last year's sales is zero, on hand is not zero, so I do have stock on them, and I haven't sold them in two years. Okay, and I've got uh, negative on hand, so this is my inventory I've allowed to go negative, um, account receivable. I've got all my over 120 list here, sales history. I've got a back order that got invoice, so every time a back order got through to my sales history, I can check this so I can see how well my back order, uh, my fulfillment of my of my orders is. Um, so in any different ways, you can set filters throughout the system. In the general ledger, for instance, I've got one set where the credit balance is not zero and the debit balance is not zero, so it's the closing balance of the account has no transactions in it. So Basically, I'm getting none of my accounts that I have not used yet this year. So on screen here, I'm getting like a trial balance. So there's many different ways you can set filters. You, it really becomes like a custom report writer that uh, you can design your own reports, save them, and then export them out.